Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. Today I want to demonstrate exposure blending, which is a technique I use in my landscape photography. Most of the time I shoot using graduated neutral density filters, which reduces the need for exposure blending. But even then, I still like to bracket my exposures in more extreme conditions. When I shot this image, I was using a case three stop reverse ND grad filter to darken the sky. Because the sun was on the horizon and facing me, the dynamic range in the scene is still very high, even though I was using the filter. To be sure I captured a usable image, I decided to also bracket the exposure. Looking at the image now, I could probably make all the adjustments that I need to using a single RAW file, but it might create some banding in the sky. So instead, I'm going to use exposure blending to bring together two frames into one image with an extended dynamic range. I'll use this image for the foreground and one of the other images in the bracketed sequence for the sky. To make this work, I'm going to do my processing of the RAW files into images using Capture One, which is my preferred RAW converter for Fuji RAW files. Both images will have the same adjustments except for the exposure and possibly colour temperature. I'll then take these images into Photoshop where I'll do the exposure blending to create a single image. I'll start with this image that I want to use for the foreground and process it in Capture One. The image was shot at 11mm and I can see the software is stretching the edges to remove the distortion. I don't like the effect on this image so I'm going to turn off the distortion correction which I think looks better. Looking at the image foreground, it has a little too much contrast at this stage and I want to open up the shadows a bit. To do this I'll start by changing the curve or camera profile to use Film Standard which opens the shadows slightly. I then want to open the shadows a bit further by reducing the contrast and also increasing the shadow slider in the high dynamic range section. This has worked well, but it's left the image looking a bit flat. I'm not too concerned about this though at this stage because it gets fixed later in the exposure blending. What I want to do though is emphasise the frost on the rocks a little more with a clarity adjustment. Finally, I want to reduce the Kelvin slider to give the frosty rocks a slightly cooler feel. Remember, what I'm trying to do at this stage is produce a good image to use for the foreground whilst ignoring the sky completely. The next step is to apply the same adjustments that I've just made to the image and use them for the sky. To do this I'll copy them to the adjustment clipboard in Capture One. I can then deselect any adjustments I made for tones because I don't want to apply those to the sky image. Once I've copied the adjustments to the sky image, I can then adjust the tones and possibly the colour of the sky. At this stage, all I'm trying to do is create a nice exposure for the sky, which I can then refine after I blend the exposure. I can ignore what's happening to the rest of the image. When I think I have the adjustments right, I'll select both images and compare them side by side. This allows me to check and adjust the tones of the two images so they're similar, which helps with the exposure blending. Once I'm happy with both images, I can process them into TIFF files, which are then passed into Photoshop. Both images are now open separately in Photoshop, but I want them as two separate layers in the same image. To do this, I'll select the image that I'm using for the sky and right click on it in the layers window. I can then select the duplicate layer option in the menu. In the duplicate layer dialog, I can set the destination of the copy as the other image. I'll also rename the new copy layer to be sky. When I switch to the other image now, you'll see that the copy sky layer is on top and the foreground image on the bottom. The next step before doing the exposure blending is to align the two image layers. 
If you don't do this, you might see some ghosting when you do the exposure blending. This can be a problem even when you've had the camera on a tripod as I did, so don't miss this step. To align the layers, select both layers in the Layers window by holding down Shift whilst clicking with your mouse. You'll find the Auto Align Layers option which we will use to make the alignment in the Edit menu. Now the layers are aligned, we can add a layer mask to the sky layer and invert it. This hides the layer so we can selectively paint in the sky using a white paintbrush. Now the trick to doing this well when exposure blending is not to paint freehand, it's to paint through a luminosity selection. This is a selection created from the image based on how light or dark each of the image pixels is. The lighter the pixels are, the more they're selected. When we paint over those areas of the mask with white, we reveal the sky layer. One way to create the luminosity selection is to load it from the channels window. To do this, click the ground layer that's visible in the layers window and then switch to the channels window. Now, hold down your command key or control key if you're using a Windows PC and click on the RGB channel. This loads a selection from the RGB channel, which in luminosity masking language is called Lights 1. An alternative method to create this is to use a luminosity masking panel like Lumenzia or TK Actions. As an example, if I use the TK Actions Rapid Mask panel, I can select the Lights 1 mask. I can then load that as a selection. Notice you don't see the marching ants for the selection when I use the panel. That's because it automatically hides them which makes painting easier. If you want to hide the marching ants, you can use the View menu where you can select Show and then Select Edges. This toggles the visibility of the selection off and on. Hiding the selection helps you to see how the exposures are blending when you're painting. To do the exposure blending, I'll use a soft white paintbrush and configure it to around 70% opacity. Now I'm going to paint on the layer mask in the light areas of the sky to reveal the darker sky layer. I'll make several passes with the brush at this opacity. Notice that I'm extending my painting below the horizon slightly because this helps with the final blend. If I hold down my Option key, that's the Alt key on a PC, and click on the layer mask, you can see what it looks like. At the moment, it's obvious where the two exposures are blending, but we haven't finished. I'm now going to reduce my brush opacity down to around 30% and change the painting with black. Remember, all the time I'm doing this, the Lights 1 Luminosity selection is still active and I'm painting through it. Finally, I'm going to clear the selection and reduce my brush opacity to 10%. I'm now going to paint over the transition zone between the sky and the ground to help blend the exposure. As I paint, I'm switching between black and white to help refine the blend. If I turn the sky layer off and on, you can see how natural the blending of the two exposures is. This makes the technique extremely difficult to detect if you didn't already know that the image used exposure blending. Now we need to deal with the image looking a little flat, which is a common problem at this stage when exposure blending. I'll correct this using a levels adjustment layer. Instead of applying a single layer, I'm going to apply separate adjustments to the two layers. This is important as it helps to improve the realism of the finished image. I'll start by selecting the ground layer and then I'll add a new levels adjustment layer immediately above it. Now I can adjust the foreground to make sure there's a black point. I'll then bring out the detail in the frost using the white and midtone levels.
Now I want to add a second levels adjustment for the sky. This time I want to create a clipping mask with the adjustment layer so that it only affects the sky layer and not the ground. When I right click on the levels layer, I can pick the create clipping mask option in the menu. Now when I adjust the levels, it only affects the sky. What I'm trying to do is create a realistic sky that blends well with the ground in the image. I'm not trying to produce a finished image at this stage. Exposure blending is only the first step in the editing process to produce the final image. Once we have a good exposure blend, we can apply other adjustments to create the finished image. Now we've covered a lot in this video, so let's quickly recap the process. Start by picking two frames to use for the exposure blending. Edit both images with the same adjustment, but then adjust one image for the ground and the other for the sky. Bring both images into an image editor like Photoshop and combine them as layers into a single image. Mask out the sky layer to hide it. Create a light swan luminosity selection from the ground layer where the sky is too bright. Paint through the selection onto the layer mask with white to reveal the replacement sky. Adjust each layer with levels to refine the blending. It's probably going to take a little practice before you're confident with exposure blending, but the process I've demonstrated usually works well. I hope you found today's video helpful. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft. I'll see you soon for another video. Thank <laughs> you.